Superman 4, his most important adventure, the quest for peace. Hi, welcome back to another Movie Nights. Lupa, I have a confession to you. Huh. I was secretly Pokemon this whole time. Oh, damn it. Oh, it doesn't work. Oh, it doesn't... No. Oh, there we go. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the joke works now, it's all good. It's fine, it's fine. That's a, a twist befitting this movie. Lewis, this is a dumb movie. This is an incredibly dumb movie. <laughs> Superman 4. Superman 4. The quest for peace. The quest for sense, which we never really found. On the back of this DVD, they even have Richard Pryor. They do not have anything from Superman 4, as far as I no, know. No, they sure don't, but they got fucking Jor-El right there, huh? Just prominent, hmm? Probably the entirety of Superman 4's salary would have gone to Marlon Brando had they gotten oh him. Gosh. Tedious. This was uh, a complete mess, but... I was looking forward to it, mm -hmm. okay, because I've been going through all of the Superman movies and I had never seen the original Christopher Reeve ones before, so I've been going through them and this one I knew was the worst. It's not like I was going in this blind, um, but I, I wasn't sure just how dumb it was. Uh, I was delighted <laughs> by how, uh, how nonsensical this whole thing was. It truly is a wonderfully <laughs> terrible movie, like you were, it was a frequent problem for you as we were watching this, it's like, Slow down, movie. I don't have I know. Much, too much to type. I know by the end I was like, stop being stupid. I can't keep, stop being stupid for a second. I'm just trying to keep up. And the, fuck, he's moving the moon now. He's moving the moon. Just stop, no, what is happening? That's not how anything works. Drinking game every single time they use the same shot of Superman flying at the camera in front of the blue screen. summary of Superman 4 Quest for Peace, so I, though I imagine most people watching this probably know the plot of this, to be honest. Well, that's the thing. It's, it's less of a single plot and more like, like five or six subplots all going on. Yeah, this is a, a, a troubled production. Um, so, uh, the plot of this movie, generically, is that Superman is trying to get rid of all the nukes. Yep. He's just gonna destroy all the nukes and that's gonna create world peace. And everyone is so happy about that. There's... And everyone's great. They're like, yeah, get rid of the nukes. Why didn't we think of that? It it's just, it was that, that easy. Simple. It's that simple. Uh, so he's trying to get rid of all the nukes, but meanwhile, Lex Luthor has uh, stolen a strand of his hair from a uh, museum, a Superman museum. He's used that to create a clone of Superman, but not really a clone, called Nuclear Man, who he must fight in order to attain world peace. I brought stuff during the movie, and I know this is like the smallest of problems with that scene and the entire movie. But the genetic material they want to use to create the you know, kind of clone of Superman, DNA is stored in hair follicles. It's like the little tiny bead thing at the end of a hair if you like yank out a hair. But looking at that hair, especially that's a really long hair they had, by the way. It was like it was like tied up around. It was an thing. armpit hair, actually. There you go. <laughs> Was Superman supposed to have cut this off and given it to them, or did he just like yank out a bunch of hair and just like hand it to them and this... just happen to grab a hair follicle in there too? Lewis, this is a movie that uh, purports that if you take a piece of cloth and stick it with genetic material, a computer will somehow weave an outfit around a clone that you create using nuclear power of the sun. You know what the sun is? It's nothing more than a huge nuclear bomb. High school physics, Luther. While I was recuperating, I had time to figure out that if your foul creature was born from the sun, that had to be a source of energy. The computer inside will weave enough material to maintain the high moral standards that I've always subscribed to. If you'll help me put this on one of your missiles, I promise you, Superman will have the biggest surprise of his life. I can only assume you must have hidden a device of some kind in one of those missiles I hurled into the sun. Look closely at the cell structure. You see anything familiar? So I don't know if they're really focused on anything scientifically accurate. Um, excuse me, this movie is the most scientifically accurate. If Superman and a nuclear man <laughs> were fighting on the moon, it would look exactly like that. If a nuclear man lifted up the Statue of Liberty, or Libertropolis, or whatever the 
<laughs> if it is New York or not, because they seem to be on the fence about if it's New York or not. Because in the subway, there was a save the statue, save the torchlight. But you know, maybe maybe Lois Lane was just in New York at that time, so you don't really know. But that raises questions for me about the fact that New York and Metropolis both exist in this universe. I guess they must, but they're the same thing, so it's a little bit confusing. Well, <laughs> uh. there is a history with this movie, uh, yes. which uh, I knew some of, um, and you, you were very helpful in, in completing some of this. This uh, was different than the other Superman movies in that it was a canon production. Yes, Golan Globus, Schlockmeisters, probably best known for Breaking 2, Electric Boogaloo. All the and, classics. And eight, 80s action schlock and popularized trends. Basically, if you're about our age and you went to a blockbuster or any kind of video store, chances are the shelves were filled with low budget movies yeah, from that. Think the, like the American Ninja series. That well, would be canon or Golden Globus. Basically the asylum of its day, except slightly more entertaining. It was a B-movie direct-to-video kind of thing. They exactly. didn't do big blockbusters, so this was their first real big thing like that, wasn't it? Yep. There, it was their, as far, I don't know if it was their first, but it was definitely one of their attempts to get some legitimacy to their studio, because the Superman movies you know, still, as far as I knew, turned a profit, and they were desperate to try to get this project underway. Although, at the same time, from what I heard, I, I this I, I remember reading about this years ago, they were actually stealing money from this production. It was like their highest budget ever for this movie. Like it was like $60 million or something mm -hmm. like that. And like half of that budget got, got, got embezzled into other projects. <laughs> Thrifty. They're being thrifty about it, I guess they would spin it as. Uh, and you would definitely see that right off the bat with the opening credit sequence. It looks like you're in a screensaver. Uh, definitely like a step down from the other credits. Chad, that, like, that, those, that, that beautiful animation of like, you know, zooming at the camera and back again. Now it's just like, wee, we got some wavy yeah. lines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another problem with this movie, too, was the fact that it really had bad uh, initial screenings of it. Uh, yep. it. It was not well received, so they decided, in order to turn more of a profit, that they were going to cut it down to an hour and a half so that they could have more screenings and therefore get more money. Um, but that's, what what I, happens, that's what I read, anyway. Yeah, I believe it, though. I, I, mean, I totally buy it, too. Yeah, because there are some scenes that are cut from this that you can find on the Blu-rays that explain a lot of, like, plot details that are really important. Now, it does not make the movie good. No, it just makes it make a little more sense. Yes. Not everything. I can only assume you must have hidden a device of some kind in one of those missiles I hurled into the sun. So they cut all this stuff out, mm. and that created the opposite pacing problem yep. of what was going on with the other movies. Like, I've complained about it in my other videos. Like, I got, like, attention span problems. And so when you got a movie that's over two hours long, you really, really have to get to the point for me to care. And a lot of the time, there would be draggy parts from, like, I really wish that this was cut down. In this case, I do wish it was expanded on because there were a lot of things that just needed explanations. They just breezed through a lot of things where I'm like, I don't, I can't follow what's going on. Yeah, it's the shortest Superman movie at 90 minutes. Superman, the first one is the longest at 143, Superman 227, Superman 325, 90 minutes, like a, like fully a half hour less than the other one, maybe an hour less. The other movies, like the first one in particular, spent a lot of time dinking around on Krypton uh, because they had, or Krypton, I Krypton. should say. Krypton. <laughs> because they spent a lot of time on Marlon Brando because he was expensive mm. and he was their their highest profile actor in there. And while like I can appreciate him as an actor, I feel like it, it made the story suffer a little bit because like it's just a lot of speeching and I don't care that much about that much content about uh, Superman's uh, um, birth parents so <laughs> they're gonna be dead in a bit <laughs> If they had chopped it out, it would have been fine. But here, they were chopping out things from the main story that really explained a lot of stuff that yep. we needed to know. It's so fast, and because there's multiple subplots going on, there's lots of things happening, and you're trying to keep track of it, but it's like, it's just hitting you with everything. And it's not made any better by the fact that this is kind of a Superman highlight reel. 
because they just repeat scenes oh. whole cloth from previous movies. Yeah, even when they're like, when he's fighting Nuclear Man, which in itself is a little bit of a copy of the, the Clark Superman fight from 3, which was the best part of it. Yeah. Um, but you're not really getting that same satisfaction. And he like, at one point, he's hammering him into the ground. Of the moon. Yeah, of the He hammers him into the moon, and it just feels like a repeat of that without any of the gravity they thought it would have. Yeah. We straight up just reused the Can You Read My Mind segment with him and Lois flying. Uh, oh, fuck. Uh, even, even drops her again. <laughs> they do. <laughs> and then when they land again, memory erasing kiss again. Fuck you, movie. <laughs> We were watching that, and then like he's like, "Well, I need to go get some fresh air," and then like he jumps down like he's gonna commit suicide. This constant like mental roller coaster with him and Lois Lane. <laughs> Poor Lois. She thinks they're gonna die, and then like Clark, Clark, Clark. Yeah, she's as if like he's gonna save her, not knowing that he's Superman at that point. Clark. Oh my God, you're right. Sorry. Clark. 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 She finds out he's Superman. This is so rushed, too. And they, they start flying, and then I'm like, Oh, I wiped your mind. Sorry, I hope that's okay. You start cracking up. Yep. <laughs> because you knew what was coming next. When they fucking, they get back, and he's like, Anyway, that was a good two minutes of screen time. Mwah. Back to the memory erasing. <laughs> Fuck you, Clark. <laughs> what an asshole. Oh, sorry. Oh. I'm pretty sure the implication is supposed to be either the kiss doesn't actually work, which seems to have, which does not make any sense given everything else we've seen in these movies, or at the very least, it's not you know complete wipe. Like she has some kind of subconscious knowledge of it. I remember everything. Because later on in the movie, when he is affected by uh, by Nuclear Man's fabulous nails. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, clawed at him. Uh, uh, she goes to him with, with Superman's cape, and it's just like, I just got a feeling I knew you would be here, and and, 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 that, no, and that you would need this. It makes no sense if she's talking to Clark. It's his apartment. I had a feeling you would be here. <laughs> I mean, it better be that subconsciously she knows he's Superman. Otherwise, she's an idiot. <laughs> but I knew you were here, you know? Somehow, somehow something pulled me here. I think they are saying that subconsciously she knows. I remember everything. But I think it's still a really dick move to do that. It is. He's taking away any of her agency in this situation. And to do it so flippantly, too. At least before, they had this mental dilemma. He was protecting her, or yeah. thought he was. In this case, it was just for, like, his own benefit for two seconds. I needed to be relieved of the burden for a second. So let's fly for a second and erased. That's shitty. If she yeah. knows it's him, she better, like, dump his ass and get out of there. <laughs> Clark? Clark, things aren't that bad! Clark, stop! Oh, Clark! You wouldn't let me die, Superman. Christopher Reeve decided he would do it if he got more creative control. Yes. And I don't know if that was necessarily a good thing, because I think a lot of his ideas, uh, like, Let's bring peace, and and it's as simple as that to end nuclear war. And all. it was a little yeah. bit, uh, I don't know, simplistic. I tell you, I'd write a letter to that would do some good. Who, Santa Claus? No, Superman. And I said we should get Superman to rid the world of nuclear arms because only he could do it. Effective immediately, I'm going to rid our planet of all nuclear weapons. <laughs> The Cold War's problem is the nuclear missiles themselves. Everyone wants world peace. They didn't want it we bad just, enough. It's, but but <laughs> <laughs> everything will be okay if we just want world peace enough. And there will be peace. There will be peace when the people of the world want it so badly that their governments will have no choice but to give it to them. Nuclear missiles are the problem. No one will have any war ever if nuclear missiles are just kaputski. I just love that when he does his speeches, like everyone at the UN's like, yeah, get rid of them nuclear missiles. No one's upset about it. <laughs> no one's upset at all. North Korea was probably there or being like, yeah, sure. You guys get rid of all the nukes. Good, good plan. They're like, that, yeah, this is great. We just wanted peace. We just didn't want it bad enough. But now soups, he, he taught us. Richard Donner, I think, was the one who, just, who said the first two Superman movies are basically a Greek tragedy. Because he loves her and he can't be with her. 
for stupid reasons, but but still, I get I get what they're trying to go for yeah. with that. I do love these movies. The first two movies have their problems, but they are genuinely good movies. Mm. The other two are not. <laughs> this is not a Greek tragedy. This is Superman being a dick. The one credit I will give this movie, and I and I don't want to I, I don't want to bring in tons of Man of Steel hate on this because we're talking about a different series of Superman movies. You're gonna you're gonna screw up my comment section. I know. You're gonna I'm screw sorry. All the Man of Steel fans. Man of Steel. <laughs> and Just that by mentioning it, you have slighted them. <laughs> Both Man of Steel and Batman v Superman, <laughs> there is this thought process that they are supposed to be about something deeper. And some people get that. And if that's the that's case, great. If you get something from those movies, okay. But for me, Superman 4 clearly wants to be in that same vein of, of it's, it has a message. It is trying to ask a question of Superman's place in the world. And that is a great basis for a movie. Sure. Uh, 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 because... What he's suggesting, it's dangerous, it's bad, it's potentially fascistic because he's making decisions for the entire planet and, and saying, I know better than everyone else. It's basically the Star Trek Prime Directive. Yes. Okay, like, should you interfere with other cultures or should you let them continue as they are? And he is the alien god in this situation. Like, should he make these decisions for people? And if it was framed as a serious question of should this be his role uh, saving us from ourselves and, and, and that kind of thing, that would be great. But no, the movie is straight up Oh yeah, yeah, Superman! He always does the right thing, therefore this is the right thing! It's a child's point of view about this. I tell you, I'd write a letter to that would do some good. When they ask questions like this, you don't have to have such a simplistic answer. Mm. It could be he thinks that this is the right solution and by destroying the nukes, other things happen, like war still continues and he realizes like, of course, I'm, I'm not gonna stop anything this way. And in fact, the question in this movie is posed by a child. Yeah. It, a kid writes him a letter that says, Superman, you could solve all this if you destroy the nukes. And he's like, oh my God, you're right. I guess I'll destroy the nukes. But that's not not how the world works. And everyone is just waiting at the wings either to, it, it, it's, it's weird. As long as Superman is there, they're okay with getting rid of their nukes, where, where everyone thinks Superman is dead. Suddenly, well, gotta start buying up those nukes again. <laughs> like, were they just afraid that Superman was gonna come kick their asses if yeah. they didn't? Then they just have like an alien overlord, and I feel like that's a different kind of problem. <laughs> Like you said, if if I had been writing this kind of a story, there would be a scene where 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 Superman like notices that there's some sort of conflict still happening without nukes, and like he goes there and tries to intervene, but of course he can't stop it, and like lots of innocent people are killed, and he realizes that this is not a solution. This is not the way to do things. People are still going to fight wars even if they don't have nukes. You can't stop human nature. You can only try to make people better. Um, try to which, save lives. Yeah, try to save lives. I mean, like, there's no one answer to a problem like this. Or maybe, or maybe uh, do like, like this is a, a, a frequent topic of Superman comics, and 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 what if situations of what if Superman went off the deep end and decided to just take over the world? Because it, because he it's, could, he because he could, and and if you want to do a good movie, you can have him slide towards that area where he's like, like where he starts imposing his will on people, and maybe like Lois is the thing that finally grounds him and says, no, this is wrong. You've got to stop yourself before you before you try to become the god king of Earth or something like that. Because that's what truly all these uh, all these elders of Krypton are trying to impart on him. There are the limits to floating heads of the, Krypton. The big floating heads of Krypton. <laughs> betrayed. Betrayed. Betrayed! 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 You think like everyone else was sick of that guy in Krypton and they're like, ah, oh, fuck you! Like he's the one that's like, you're doomed! He's doomed! He's, he's, he's the, he's the, for, uh, the, the foreteller of doom on Krypton. Like, 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 like that old guy. I hope he dies in an explosion. <laughs> Kryptonian and Jason Voorhees is coming around. This guy is just like, you were being betrayed. I was right. Yes, Steve, but you were wrong the 80 other times that happened. 
Get to the point. You know, if they were being smart about this, they could have used the fact that Clark is so flippantly erasing uh, Lois's mind to be like, this is the slippery slope, right? Mm. You can't just use your powers to do whatever you want. And then that would be a turnaround. Like, she could be like, you can't just decide, like, she subconsciously knows, and she's like, you can't decide this for me. You can't make people do what you want them to do. Yeah. Um, but instead, they have a love triangle thing going yep. on with her and, and uh, Mariel Hemingway. It's a date. A date? Wow. A date? Which brings us to another subplot of the movie. The Daily Planet is brought out by, Mr. I, I can't remember his first name, Warfield, who is basically Rupert Murdoch. David Warfield? No. A tycoon who owns all the sleazy tabloids? That wasn't really much of anything. They were basically kind of doing the Spider-Man, you know, like, oh, that Spider-Man's a menace. <laughs> no, no, in this case, it's, I want, it's, it's sort of like that. It's, it's the sensationalistic newspaper headlines of, of, of like, yeah, Summit Kaput, is the world on the brink? Superman dead. Superman the kid, drop dead. <laughs> drop dead. <laughs> <laughs> which we saw in a deleted scene, which is where, where we probably got that from. Yeah. Although it's funnier without the deleted scene uh, of just like, I just hope Superman answers me. Superman just can't drop dead. <laughs> well, that's how he, you know, he's pushed into doing the right thing by destroying all the nukes. I do particularly love his plan for destroying the nukes. He, uh, <laughs> he takes them all into space, puts them in a giant space net, flings them into the sun. <laughs> Somehow this works. <laughs> People of Earth, I want you to launch your nukes into space. It's okay, I will catch them and throw them into the sun. <laughs> oh, thanks, Shoops. You really relieved us of a burden. Where did he get this giant space net? The, what was it attached to? Krypton. What? This doesn't, <laughs> this doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't pass my smell test. <laughs> Doesn't work. I, I love I love when we, when that scene happened. He's spinning around with the net to build up momentum in space to throw the net, and you're just like, no, 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 no. no. Sun's destroyed. The Earth's destroyed. <laughs> Superman <laughs> fucked everything. This is what happened to Krypton, really. Krypton. It's been like that since Marlon Brando said Krypton in the first movie, where it where. Is it kryptonite or kryptonite or I, I don't or just krypton? Krypton, krypton, kryptonese, krypton, yeah, whatever. You know, it's Caribbean, Caribbean. It's yeah, a, either or. But but anyway, they keep drawing comparisons to to this is the same fate that will befall the planet uh, that, that befell Krypton. Except it's not. Krypton was destroyed from a natural disaster that that, that maybe they could have done something to prevent. If but this had been about global warming, perhaps, mm. then maybe this would be sort of a parallel message. But uh, but instead, yeah, it's 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 the new. Is nuclear weapons, which the planet will survive if we all die, which would suck, of course, but you know what I mean. Superman would be okay. Why is he concerned about this? <laughs> well, that's, that's the thing. The older guys were like, eh, screw the Earth. There are other planets you could go to instead. They're probably better planets <laughs> who have never known war. <laughs> Run. Rupert Murdoch puts his daughter in charge of the Daily Planet as the publisher, but she's falling for Clark Kent because his aw oh, shucksism uh, uh, got to her. While she's all like, "Every guy likes me. I'm very rich. I'm very rich. <laughs> Don't be silly. All men like me. I'm very, very rich." I liked her in this a lot, actually. I liked her style. I do like she's like, she's waiting. They have a hilarious double date scenario where it's got Clark and Superman and Lois and uh, Lacey. Lacey, Lacey Warfield. Warfield is uh, is her character's name, and they have a hilarious double date with all of them, where Clark and uh, Superman keep switching off. And uh, I like she's like, oh, it's probably just Superman. Oh, there's Clark. Oh, okay, fix that. There you. Go. You look great. Oh, well, maybe it's just Superman. <laughs> eh, whatever. <laughs> we're, we're so used to him by now. All this comedy stuff with him in this. It, it was less Superman comedy stuff than they had in the other ones, I think. Like, they have the bit where they're all doing the aerobics and he, like, tosses a weight at a guy and almost kills him. And that's another thing. That's basically a repeat of the scene from Superman 2 in the, in the diner. What did they do? What was the diner scene in? Uh, where that guy was an asshole to Clark and Lois, and he went back later and just like kicked his ass as when oh, he had his yeah, power well, back. He wasn't trying to kick that guy's ass in the, the aerobics thing, right? He was kind of an asshole. To he him. was an asshole to him, and so that's when he and 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 then oh, when he did so, he threw the barbell at him. It was petty, Clark. It was petty, back. Clark. It was Petty Clark. Man of Steel, you really want to see Petty Clark where he impales a truck on a tree or something. Oh, fun stuff. <laughs> Okay, one problem that I've had with all these Superman movies, okay. and people are gonna get on me in the comments about it, but like, okay, Clark is an idiot 
who's constantly going to like reveal his secret identity by like bumbling through things and like I've tried to distinguish this here It's not part of his I get that it's part of his character to be bumbling hmm. those parts I get and I get that there is a distinct difference between Clark and how he portrays himself as Superman, but there are so many things that he does that is just for the audience's benefit That is clearly just him bumbling like him falling into a fireplace and maybe you could say oh subconsciously He wants uh, he wants uh, Lois to know about him or whatever, but he's like getting hit by cars He's juice pressing his thumb. He does shit like that in this a little bit But I would say this was the one he did it the least in I think he was better at protecting his identity in this even with the scene where he's got to go back and forth between Clark and Superman on the date. Well, he's so good at it, he's able to uh, 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 ring a doorbell from the How? other, from inside the room. How did he ring the doorbell? Oh, wait, that's him. What? Hi. He's got new powers constantly. He always does in these movies, but that one just like, come on, man. <laughs> like, 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 is the implication that he has telekinetic powers? He must. That's how he does the, uh, the, the brick laying on yeah, the- Yeah, his wall repair <laughs> vision. <laughs> He's just psychically putting the bricks back. Yep. <laughs> Claymation, Great Wall of China reassembled. It's fine. There's a lot of comedy bits in this movie, which are just unnecessary. And then, of course, that brings us, it's sort of part of the main plot. We have Lex's new assistant, his nephew, Lenny. Lenny Luther. Played John by John Cryer. Cryer. Lenny, I've always considered you the Dutch elm disease in my family tree. Who, apparently in, in, su in the Supergirl TV series right now, is playing Lex Luthor. Is he? And apparently he's really good, too. <laughs> All right. Good going, John Cryer. Good mm. going. <laughs> good for you. Well, he's got, like, the bald thing going on now, too. He yep. fit uh, the perfect aesthetics for the uh, classic Lex Luthor. But it's okay. We got Lenny here, who's the dude of steel, man. Boy, you're getting get Oh, no. <laughs> I like his catchphrase. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Is very non enthusiastic. Oh, no. He just like he just never shut up too. Like they have a part where a nuclear man is like throwing him around in a tornado. He's like, I'm break dancing. Hey. <laughs> 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 Shut up for just a second, okay? It's like he's trying to out annoy Richard Pryor. Yeah. Like he's like, hold my beer, for <laughs> Superman three. <laughs> I can. I got this. What do you 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 know? Hey. Him and Lex Luthor, I th I f okay, uh, we, there's a whole plot going on with him. He uh, assembles a group of people, war profiteers. Basically a guy from a think tank, a nuclear arms dealer, and uh, someone else. I think just another arms dealer or something like that. Or like a general from some, from some country. I can't remember. They're barely a point in this movie other than to show they're evil. And <laughs> the only people who would want nuclear weapons are people who would gain profit from them. I think like Lex Luthor has a line about making the world safe for war profiteers That's or it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if we work together, we can make the world safe for war profits. I, I really like Lex in this. He, he's so happy throughout the whole thing. He's not really any different than he was in the other movies to me. It's a lot of the repeating stuff, like he's in comedy jail again in the yep. beginning, but he felt less shoehorned in than he was in the second one because the second one was a, a, a large mess behind the scenes too and yep. it felt like he was such an unnecessary element. Um, I know some of that's not their fault because it was from pieces of what they had already filmed, uh, but he just didn't feel like he needed to be yeah. there. But here, I, he was funny enough. I do think like they needed to find something other than Lex Luthor to like after four movies. But uh, Gene Hackman's still good. So. He, he felt he felt more like this is a comic-based thing. So so sorry to bore people about about stuff from the comics. But <laughs> the original Lex Luthor, when he was created, was basically just a mad scientist. Uh, uh, who became Superman's arch nemesis because he was so smart and he could invent weird gadgets, wore like br bright purple and green outfits, and eventually got like a power armor that he could use to punch Superman. <laughs> but uh, after Crisis on Infinite Earths, the big reboot uh, event of DC Comics, uh, he got remade as a business mogul. So he was like, uh, uh, basically like the rich asshole who, who thought himself superior to everyone else and hated Superman because everyone loved and adored him versus himself, who was like, but I'm I'm Lex Luthor, I'm awesome and rich, you should love me more, I'm smarter. Uh, so, <laughs> and this, this in this movie, he felt more like what, uh, what comics Lex eventually became. 
uh, with, with the business mogul. Because he, because while he was not a true business mogul here, he was making business deals with the arms merchants. He had his own tower, which he used to flaunt wealth and just and just act like a, ha ha ha, God, I'm so awesome. Okay, here's his business deals, all right? Like, yeah. he's like, I got a clone. And then he opens the curtain and the nuclear man was just waiting there for this <laughs> reveal in the corner, like, ha ha. And then just, does he kill them or he just get? He, he just like, makes them run away. Okay, yeah, they have this kind of anti-death thing going on. But he was, they, yeah, but he was the including one. Including those like cops at the beginning. Yeah. They, like throw them off of like, uh, they like the car flies uh, into a gorge and then they have to show them like. Crawling up. Uh, yeah. It's, I can There's see no their parachutes. Die. <laughs> All right. Look, I can see their parachutes. They're okay. But 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 yeah, like he's the one who unites these tycoons together just so he can, you know, make money off of a deal by saying, like, I can help you get your nuclear weapons back out to people if you, you know, give me a commission on it. And they were actually gonna be nice and give him a bigger cut, but he was like, nah. I'm just gonna take it all. His greed is what undid him once yep. again. You know what I don't understand about him in this movie? It's like, first of all, why was he living in the sewer if he had like a big tower like I this know, anyway? Right? And uh, he went from being like a guy who just wanted to blow California off the map using a bunch of missiles. And make real estate. And make real estate. To like a, a, a genius scientist. Like in the second one, they had him create like hologram technology and stuff. So it's not like he wasn't smart before, but I feel like Going into cloning is an entirely different kind of science. You know what I can do with a single strand of Superman's hair? You make it toupee that flies. There was also some things explained in uh, in the deleted scenes about this. Like, he's creating Nuclear Man, which is a whole other thing. But before he makes this clone, he makes a first clone, which is a first Nuclear Man, which is sort of a, a trying to be Bizarro. Yeah, I, Superman. Th I think it, I think it was their attempt to do a take off of Bizarro, much like how in Superman three they were kind of doing a take off of Brainiac, but not really. This guy has a very chalky face. He's all yeah. he's basically a failed clone of Superman, uh, and everything's the opposite with him. He's very stupid, and he's from. Bizarro world, so yes. everything is the opposite. And in in the animated series, uh, the 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 really good DC a animated universe, uh, he was actually straight up a clone of Superman that Lex Luthor made. Yeah, they keep making clones in this that aren't really clones, though, and I yeah. feel like they don't really understand what clone means. So in this case, we have the first <laughs> Nuclear Man. His stuff was uh, was deleted from the movie, mostly because their fight was a bit more comedic. Because sure. you know we didn't you know. How dare we have another comedic scene in this movie, this super serious film, Superman 4. Wow, I'm break dancing. Hey, this rocks. Hey. Oh. I kind of wish they'd kept it, but it wouldn't make it better. But like, it, it, I mean, it's a really silly scene. But like, it also explains why they have this genetic material all of a sudden. That yep. they're like, where did they get this from in the original cut, of, or the final cut of the movie? It well, obviously, make any sense. Well, obviously, this little blob they got from that one hair that he got. What? No. <laughs> That, that was this supposed how to be. Dolly the Sheep was made. They just had like pieces of cloth and a. Yeah, they put it in a box which hair. had a which had a computer in it. And they put a computer in it, and then they're like, "The sun is a nuclear power, so you can make a clone with it." <laughs> what? <laughs> Hello, Dolly. It's so nice to have me back where I belong. He can't say nuclear. He says nuclear. Yeah, nuclear power. Nuclear strategist. Nuclear warhead dealer. Nuclear bomb. A nuclear man. Look, look, there's a very distinct difference between nuclear and nuclear. Nuclear. <laughs> nuclear. That's why everything makes sense. Yes. <laughs> all these things, all these things are per make perfect sense if it, you know, with nuclear power. Nuclear power. So I'm going to put this cloth and some, some stuff in a beaker with a computer and it'll weave a suit or something. <laughs> it'll weave a suit once the nuclear material of the, because he attaches Does it he, to, he a, attaches to a nuclear to missile. missile. Yes. A, a nuclear missile. Nuclear warhead. At, which launches out, Superman catches it, tosses it, it tosses into the sun. It the sun, and then the sun creates Nuclear Man. A nuclear man. Who, who forms like the space baby in 2001, a space odyssey or For a something. second, yeah. And then... And then <laughs> the fabulous nails. <laughs> yeah. I love Nuclear Man. I love Nuclear Man. I love this guy. He's got big blonde hair. He seems very confused by his long, fabulous nails and his lightning. He likes to roar like a T-Rex. <laughs> <laughs> He 
just wants destruction. He just, he hates Superman so much. That seems to be his only motivation. Destroy Superman. <laughs> and, and they have Gene Hackman doing his voice. Yeah, that was a weird choice. No, I you think. have my voice. Why? But he's not a clone of him. No. You have my voice. Maybe he's supposed to be both. Is that why he looks so weird? Maybe that was it. Maybe like he injected some of his own DNA in is there. He's supposed to be smart because he isn't. <laughs> is that, does he like? Is he really like real estate? <laughs> is that what's going on? <laughs> First, I have fun with real estate schemes. Yes, yeah, he loves to have fun, but he doesn't look it. First. I have fun. To look at him, you wouldn't think he likes to have fun, but he's like, first I'll have fun. I like too, he's essentially, uh, he's essentially Eye Man. Y he, if you take him away from the sun, he depowers. And of course, there are plenty of scenes in the movie where he is not in direct sunlight. No, he's in space at one point and he's fine. <laughs> The solar power, I remember reading a long, long time ago that there was a logic behind it. It was dumb logic and stupid that like su sun power has something to do with certain nuclear power or nuclear weapons things, but it still is the stupidest thing in the world to have your nuclear villain be eco-friendly. Yeah, I don't know if it really gave us a message or, or anything from that. So, so you're saying our true enemy is the sun? Uh, destroy the sun, nuclear weapons, it's fine. No, the sun is immune to nuclear weapons, that's why we can't stop it. We need Superman to move the sun. Move it farther away and we'll be fine. Hmm. Nuclear Man just knows where Lex Luthor is and that he has anything to do with him for some reason. I don't know, maybe the computer had a homing beacon in it? Yep, that's uh, what I'm guessing. So, so we find Lex Luthor dancing with a woman in a Georgian dress. I remember. For, for no reason? For no reason. Th he's, who he's, was that? He's rich and he wants to dance with a woman in a Georgian dress. And I, ha and I have to say Georgian dress because otherwise the last time I talked about this movie people were very upset that I mis mis misidentified it as a Victorian dress because I don't know dress periods. But actually, <laughs> it's part of Superman's cover is a Georgian dress. Just watch. I'll, 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 it turns out I've remembered it wrong and it's actually an Edwardian dress or something <laughs> like, like that. I don't know. It's a fucking old timey dress. What the hell? Why is, Why this, is happening? this happening? That is the thing we take away There's from this. There's so many times I've asked in this movie, why is this happening? <laughs> Lex Luthor is just rich and he wants to, and he wants to do that. He had those two those two hench ladies from before who disappear from the movie afterwards. Yeah, no, nothing really meant. He's a, he's a man of a lot of last minute whims. Just like he's, you think like he paid someone to do this. Like he's like, find me someone in a Georgian dress. No, he hired a prostitute. <laughs> $200 to dance with me. Hired a prostitute, it's like, okay, I know this is gonna be weird, but I want you to put on this dress and dance with me. I like the idea of Lex Luthor going, this is gonna be weird. <laughs> also, also, this Superman solar-powered clones might show up. Don't worry about it. Just FYI, if he comes, you can go, there's a check on the table. My skunk-haired nephew might want to watch. It's fine, he's actually pretty quiet. Oh, God. oh no! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I mean, so he knows where to find him and he uses his nuclear finger a la E.T. to like light his cigar. And then Nuclear Man is like, I ain't gonna listen to you, I am the father now. <laughs> I am the father now. I love that too. It's like he uses the finger to, to, to light his cigar. Now you have cancer, Lex. <laughs> and nuclear power is really good for you though, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, build strong bones. <laughs> Which is funny, he did get cancer in the comics. What, who got cancer? Lex Luthor. Oh, oh. I guess he got over it, though. Cause, yeah, because kryptonite actually does give off low levels of radiation, and since he always wore a kryptonite ring on his finger, it that basically... <sighs> it came back to him. Karma. Yep. You get cancer <laughs> if you go after Superman. <laughs> The quest for cancer. The quest for cancer. Oh, God. Let's talk about the quest for peace because that is, is technically another subtitle, uh, the subplot of this movie. Yeah. Uh, the reason why Superman is spurned into action about this is because a summit has failed. 
Just a summit. Just uh, su a generic summit. And because the summit has failed. And because the summit has failed. The summit has failed, and therefore we cannot be second in the nuclear arms race. And, uh, of course, that was a thing. It was the Cold War. There was the arms race and trying to have, you know, thousands upon thousands of nuclear weapons. Which, by the way, man, Superman must have had a really long week. I mean, even, even just that bundle of nuclear weapons couldn't have been more than, like, a few hundred. And there are, like, tens of thousands of nuclear weapons out there. You got there, rid so. of all the nuclear weapons. <laughs> Got all rid of, of them. all of them. All of them. Superman can do anything. A child said he could do it. Did, did he? Did he have multiple nets ready for every single big load of nuclear missiles? Everyone's like, we got a half day of school. You might be seeing some solar flares today. Uh, nuclear weapons are being launched into the sun by Superman. <laughs> so did, did he like talk to all the world governments at the UN and told them, by the way, I can only do this from like five to six, because I got a day job. But you know, unlike most politicians, uh, Superman kept his promise. He did, in fact, get rid of the nukes like he, did. he said he would. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then everyone was happy. Lex Luthor contacts uh, Clark when he is on his uh, hilarious double date mm -hmm. uh, by using a frequency that only Superman can hear and see. Again, greatest hits from the previous Superman movies. Now we got, th that was a thing from the first movie where there was this ultrasonic sound that only he could hear. That makes sense to me. As much sense as a comic book movie can. But th you can't have a video frequency only he can see. That doesn't make sense. Yep. It's just, just like, it's, it's the Max Hedrum incident all over again, except in this case, it's only on a specific frequency. Oh, so it was it was Lex Luthor dressed up as Max Hedrum going, I hacked CBS! It's a frequency only you can see, Superman! You ain't watching any Doctor Who today! <laughs> So Superman goes to Lex Luthor, and they have this, like, back and forth like they usually do. And I don't remember what led up to it, but there was a very funny line where he goes like, It's common knowledge that you hate children and animals, Luthor. It's common knowledge that you hate children and animals, Luthor. Yo. Common knowledge. Everyone knows this. You're gonna make the world safe for, for little kids and puppy dogs, something like that. So he brings out a nuclear man. A nuclear man. As his secret weapon who loves to have fun. <laughs> uh, they have a bad screen fight, and the bad screening in this. Um, it, it's bad for the time because we saw much better screening. I realized they had a budget problem, but like you could see in the movies that were earlier than that, they, I mean, you can tell they're screening, but they don't really look bad. The first movie was predicated on a very simple premise of how we're going to do this. We need to convince people that he is actually flying. We, yeah. That's why the tagline of the movie is, you will believe a man can fly. Because that was, that was a big deal back then. Hmm. I mean, like those kinds of effects were, were really impressive, and like they still are, but like um, for that time it was a really big deal. And here, the effects, uh, the screening that they're doing, they desaturate the, the color, so yep. it, it blends in even less, and it makes Nuclear Man look naked, because yep. he's wearing gold, so it makes it look like he's fighting some naked guy, <laughs> or like he's wearing like a, a Borat, like mankini or something. <laughs> this fight goes on forever, and this is not the end fight, this is just a middle fight. He goes to a volcano, mm -hmm. uh, Nuclear Man sets off the volcano, and then uh, Clark goes and like cuts off the top of a mountain and then plugs up the volcano with it? Problem solved. <laughs> Problem solved. And he like, he uses his uh, his ice breath to uh, to freeze the lava that's coming at people. Which is which, the only, yeah. the only time during this fight where his powers work the way they're supposed to. They have a nail fight, which is pretty great. <laughs> 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 and then slash across the neck. Yeah. Ah, I'm sick now, but yeah. I can still set the Statue of Liberty down he, perfectly. He, he slices his neck, therefore he will become a nuclear man when the moon is full. <laughs> it, it makes him sick and it turns him old? Yeah, you, you can't really see it that well, but it's clear that like, uh, uh, his, his hair is turning white, he's got a bunch of wrinkles. Maybe the idea was to make him kind of resemble radiation poisoning or something like that, but... Maybe. You don't see it very well, and there's no progression there, because, like, he's apparently been missing for some time before, like, Lois finds him, and he just looks like he has the flu or something. Yeah. Like, he, I mean, he looks sick, but he doesn't look like he's aging. And then in the next scene, you see him, like, old man Clark, and uh, he is going to the spaceship that he landed on Earth on because there is a, uh, a kryptonite bar or some sort of yep. 
Like, yeah. like, like, apparently the spaceship is still there where it was. He never moved it to the Fortress of Solitude or anything. And there's still one glowing crystal inside of it that apparently he just never bothered to take out until now. With a message from, I think it's supposed to be his mother. Basically saying, yeah. like, like, this contains the last piece of our culture on the planet Krypton. If you take it out of your ship, it will grow cold and dead. And by <laughs> that, I mean it will disintegrate. It just disintegrates. Like, that makes it easy, because he was selling the farm anyway. You yeah. people finding that. It felt like that was supposed to be a subplot that never actually got started. Yeah. It, it got started and then never went anywhere. Yeah, where his he's... mom died off screen, apparently. His uh, mom apparently uh, died off screen. Possibly Lana Lang, too. We didn't hear anything else about her, so <laughs> she's dead. R.I.P. Lana Lang. <laughs> He's like supposed to be selling it and he doesn't want to sell it to like some corporate development. He wants to sell it to another farmer. Yeah, Cowboy uh, Elbow Patches is like, no one wants farms anymore. I'm pretty sure all the farms will be wiped out. Today, nobody wants a farm. Now you, you blink your eye and they'll all be gone. That's progress. No, oh, no one wants produce or livestock or anything. Nope. That's where the cloning comes in, you see. That's why it's bad. That's yep. why you shouldn't make nuclear powered clones. <laughs> This is truly the greatest message this movie conveys. The thing that didn't make sense to me with the piece of the spaceship was uh, the mom narration, which by the way, I'm really glad they couldn't afford Marlon Brando again because I didn't have to deal with more jor -El. So she says that if you take this out, you can use the power only once and also this will be your permanent home now. You, as if he could go back to Krypton? Krypton. That doesn't, it's, it's destroyed. I'm sure there's things that happen later in the comics, but it's gone. It's, it, you know, with this movie, considering how many things seem to survive, it's, it's always been a thing in the comics, like, like half of Krypton has survived its destruction at this point. <laughs> like, like, they could just, I mean, there was a storyline where they actually had, like, the bottle city of Kandor get restored to full size, and they create a new Krypton. It's suddenly a whole bunch of Kryptonians running around. Even that, like, like, like you say, this will be the last piece of our own planet. This will be your permanent home. Well, technically, the last piece of his planet is kryptonite. You know, all that dangerous, poisonous stuff that's been yeah, raining from the sky. Yeah, it's kryptonite, but apparently it powered him up. No, it's it's special healing powers, I guess. But it was green kryptonite, so why would it be the opposite? It, it gave him a refreshing mint. What? Cleaning. No, this <laughs> I don't... <sighs> to fix him from his radiation poisoning. And, and as we know, green has nothing to do with radiation. <laughs> Destroy <laughs> Superman! <laughs> it's like this movie lives in opposite land. Uh, yeah. There you go, it's Bizarro again. It's Bizarro! Radiation is red, uh, healing powers are green, nuclear power is solar powered. So nuclear man, nuclear man. <laughs> nuclear man. A nuclear man. A nuclear man. Goes after uh, Mariel Hemingway because uh, in a uh, deleted scene that explained why Bizarro uh, Superman had a thing for her. Yep. He apparently also has a thing for her. So he sees a picture of her in the newspaper and decides that he's going to go after her. But in this cut of the movie, it just makes no sense. He just sees a picture of her and just goes after her. And apparently Superman knows he's going after her for he's reasons just... that are unexplained. You're not going to get her. Who? How do you know that? <laughs> the the piece of kryptonite gave him the knowledge to know this. His the parents old, knew everything. The old the elders of Krypton told him about it. If you don't stay, stop nuclear man from taking Lacey, you will be betrayed. There's a lot of fuck use to physics in this movie. They're, oh, they, uh, <laughs> Holding up the Statue of Liberty by the finger. Holding up the Statue of Liberty. And then like when they have that fight after he's he's going after Lacey, uh, he tornadoes a SWAT van and the people are like just flying <laughs> in the air. This is how nuclear power works. Of course. This is the real science right here. <laughs> this is the movie scientists don't want you to see. <laughs> Big science is trying to stop you from seeing the true power of, of, of nuclear energy. People didn't think there were nuclear man-truthers out there, but you, you see two of them before you today. That, see, that's why they had the subplot of Rupert Murdoch taking over the paper, because it's trying to tell you that they're trying to keep this, keep the, the corporate interests are trying to keep you from learning the truth about nuclear man. <laughs> <laughs> A nuclear man. A nuclear Nuclear man. I always want to say it the right way, but it's nuclear man. Yep. A nuclear man. He's trapped in an elevator a la I-Man. Again, that's something they did. They're trapped <laughs> in an elevator and then, oh no, there's no sun here. I, uh, <laughs> I like it light. 
What year was I Man? I'm curious Iron now. Man was 86. 86. This was 87, I want to say. Oh my god, they ripped them off. Yep. They were watching Iron Man and they're like, you know what? We can improve on this. <laughs> Screw Iron Man. I know this is the real superhero movie. <laughs> I love it. Superman's like, all right, I trap him in an elevator. I'm just going to drop him off on the moon where there's no sun. The just, sun will never touch the moon. <laughs> which sadly means he straight up, he straight up kills Nuclear Man in this. He doesn't though because the sun touches is it and then he gets well not yet anyway but he intended to do so and later on he kills him superman's allowed to do it i guess so yeah <laughs> the quest for peace as long Rest as he's in peace it's okay as long as he feels kind of bad about it afterwards <laughs> does he <laughs> no <laughs> of course the sun touches the the moon and he gets out and they have a moon fight <laughs> You know what? I think it was better than the Superman 2 moon fight. I think it was less silly than that one, even though he's fighting a man with long nails. <laughs> and the sad thing is, like, I told you about this before. With with the advent of modern effects, I always wanted, I wanted Superman to throw a damn punch, because this is technically the best fight he's had in any of these movies. And it's so, and it's in slow motion because they're on the moon. Everything moves in slow motion on the moon. And then after Superman returns, I was just like, man, I want Superman to have to like, could we have a movie where Superman throws a punch and then the monkey's paw, just like, I, like curl the finger up and we got, and we got later movies. Yeah, hey, asshole, don't forget your tip. So he hammers Superman into the ground, and then he goes and grabs Mariel Hemingway and takes her into space, and she's fine? Yep. She's fine in space? How the hell is Lacey surviving out there? Even if you pretend she could hold her breath, the elements of space, surely like entering the uh, out of the atmosphere, surely that would burn her to a crisp. She would not be okay. And this was, a, this was this, these were blue screenshots. You didn't have to have them in space. <laughs> they could have had them anywhere. I mean, there's even a scene where, like, after Superman moves the moon... He, he moves the moon to depower Nuclear Man. A nuclear man. And, like, he <laughs> loosens his grip on her, and she it looks like she's falling. Like, she's starting to fall, like, like, trying to hold on to him for dear life. And it's like, I don't think it works like that. <laughs> they are clear of the Earth. They are, like, halfway to the moon at this point. Is he gonna... Where is he taking her, anyway? Was he gonna set up a... Was, was, he, was that elevator gonna become their new apartment? Yeah. <laughs> he gonna set up a moon base? He'd be sitting there for a couple months, like her arms folded, like this sucks. I thought, I thought you would like this place, Lacey. I, I, I thought, I mean, why aren't you happy in our little moon apartment? <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, we free electricity. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Is it cause the sun roasts us every day? Or? <laughs> This is when the movie's completely off the rails, though. Moving the moon. The movie is, ba <laughs> is basically just giving the middle finger to the audience at this point. I, that was when I just started yelling, stop being stupid. Stop being stupid, movie. Just, for, just stop being stupid for a second. Oh, God. Please. Please. <laughs> like, and, and meanwhile, down on Earth, there are tidal waves are destroying everything. Yeah, yeah. Everything <laughs> flowing, flowing into chaos. Gravity is inverting. <laughs> This depowers him, so he throws him into like a stack in a nuclear power plant, which just superpowers all the lights. Instead of creating electrical surges and fires, he would have destroyed the Earth. Nope. <laughs> also, apparently, this one nuclear plant was like powering up like half the planet. Uh, apparently, yeah. Well, also, he was just that powerful. Uh, on that same note, he's nuclear mad. Why is nuclear power hurting him? <laughs> what is this? It's, I don't duck. <laughs> are we sure this guy isn't supposed to be called Solar Man? Because it really feels like that's what he's supposed to be. Well, what is the sun but a giant nuclear weapon? <laughs> it's nothing more than a huge nuclear bomb. So then we get to our wrap up. Mm -hmm. And I guess Superman learned that he can't interfere, even though nothing about this really was, was his fault or the fault of the plan. The plan seemed perfectly reasonable, but he's like, yeah, the Earth is back where it was, continually on the brink, but it's okay. <laughs> like, 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 what did you learn? How did you learn this? The world gonna be vaporized. No, Luther, it's as it always was, on the brink. 
for good fighting evil. No one learned anything from this movie. They were back where they began. In fact, they dropped the Luthers off at Comedy Jail again. And, and, and Lenny gets taken to a boy's town, even though he's clearly like 25 years old. Every boy can be helped, Superman. They also have the subplot with the Daily Planet wrapped up really super easy. Harry's just like, uh, hey, uh, so anyway, I convinced the bankers, uh, all the major bankers, to treat the Daily Planet like a, like a commodity here. And so they gave me all these loans, and then I bought, like, like big bankers are it. Like, they're like, yeah, go for the little man. We're against big newspaper. Yep. So he buys out all the shares, and he's like, haha, you're off the paper, you dumbass. Way to go, team! <laughs> Yay! We also had the, had the subplot wrap-up of because of Lacey becoming a good guy because Clark was just so wholesome and aw shucks that, that, that she just had to turn good. But you know what? I like the idea of that. I like that, that was actually, Clark essentially she had a problem. She yeah. had a proper arc in the movie as a result. Yeah, honestly, she had more to do than, than Lois Lane did, which is really a shame because I feel like Lois got shortchanged again. Yeah, at least she had more to do this time. She did. It was more than three. It was less of a fuck you than three was, uh, but it still felt like a lot of just like... Pfft. We're we did! <laughs> uh, the quest for peace and the quest was failed because <laughs> I guess world peace is just not going to happen now. But it's okay. We will have world peace when the people of the world want it so badly that their governments cannot hope to resist them. And as we all know, governments always listen to their people. Mm -hmm. And it's why we don't have world peace right now because we just don't want it bad enough. We're we did! I feel like children learned a lot from this movie. <laughs> like, if you write a letter to Superman, he will try to solve your problems with you. And in a deleted scene, he'll tell you to drop dead. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't tell him I to know, he did it. He was pretty nice, too. That was an embellishment on the part of the New Daily Planet. Uh, excuse me, I read it in the newspaper, therefore it was true. <laughs> I, I, I think we've covered uh, every single second of this movie at this point. This it's... review might be as long as Quest for Peace was. Um, and you've covered this movie twice now. This is your second review of the movie. Um, do you feel like this time around you had any sort of different experience? This was my first time, but you've you've had quite a bit of time since the last time you saw it. It feels like it's actually worse the, 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 this, oh, yeah? this next time around, <laughs> having seen it. Because now that I'm a little bit older, a little bit wiser, I do understand that, wow, the pacing is so bad. I didn't even notice the pacing problems of the movie originally. That it moves very, very quickly. They... It's a very tight 90, 90 minutes, and yet there's so much they're trying to do in it. I feel like I'm a little more forgiving of it in some areas because I enjoy so bad it's good stuff more. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I, I applaud it for its ambitions, but but like it didn't know what it was doing. <laughs> it was uh, it was enjoyably bad yes. for me. Uh, I think. Yeah, it's very obvious that there were like production issues putting aside the plot of it uh, It's just you can tell by the pacing and the writing and the things that that don't uh, Have enough time dedicated to it that there were clearly some things behind the scenes going on. So as far as like the technical quality of the uh, of the Superman movies, this was the worst one, but I enjoyed it more than three. Mm. I gotta say, it was enjoyably bad. Like, I had fun watching this, and it was pretty quick to get through. I appreciated that there was a shorter runtime. So, I think, like, as a first-time viewer, I had fun. It was it was as good as I expected and more. It was delightfully stupid. I th I thought that, that that would be your your <laughs> your take on it. <laughs> so I think like if if there's anyone out there, I guess that hasn't seen it, I would recommend it as a so bad it's good movie. I Definitely. had a good time. It's a different take on Superman. So it's it's um it's good in a different kind of way. <laughs> yes. Well, good being the the. Good for a certain kind of thing. Sure. Um, the first two movies, the first one more so, are genuinely good movies. Mm. Uh, the second one has like production issues, so I don't think it's it's as good to me as the reputation is. But it's still a decent movie, mm. and it's got some really good fight scenes. Um, the, the third movie has got a lot of issues, um, <laughs> plot-wise, and it can be kind of draggy uh, and kind of boring at parts, so uh, I feel like that was the weakest of the lot, honestly. Yep. Uh, but four was a, was a good time. Yeah. I can definitely agree with you there. <laughs> oh me, oh my, oh me. All right, what do you what do you want to leave people with? There will be peace. There will be peace. <laughs> 
Someday, we'll Someday. find it. Someday. Once we, once we see a gazelle giving birth in Africa. <laughs> yeah, I love that you joke about that. Did he appear in front of the UN? <laughs> Did the Enterprise speech? <laughs> in Africa, I once saw a gazelle giving birth. When I was in my early 20s on a trip to East Africa, I saw a gazelle giving birth. It was truly amazing. Within minutes. And in conclusion, Vulcans were mean to my dad. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys. See you guys. <laughs>